have our 18th meetup and first meetup of 2021. We have with us Pavel Jankovic, who is a Kaggle Grandmaster and owner of Logic AI. And he will be talking about synthetic data generation for deep learning. Welcome, Pavel. And agenda for the meetup today is from 8 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. We'll have the talk by Pavel. And post that, we'll have a Q&A session. So make sure to put up all your questions in the chat and we'll have them answer by him. So now without further ado, let's begin with the meetup. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be invited uh, to the meetup. Uh, I think uh, uh, Kaggle Days in Delhi is the biggest and most vibrant uh, community of Kaggle uh, in the world. So uh, and just just by the number of the meetups, right? It's 18th meetup and uh, it's, it's amazing that uh, you have so many events uh, concerning the Kaggle Days. Um, yeah, and uh, today's topic is, I think, very interesting uh, for me. Uh, and for you, I hope. Uh, it's a topic that combines together a few areas. It com combines, of course, deep learning, uh, data set creation, uh, Python programming, and uh, which is one, one of the most uh, uh, useful things for this is uh, 3D computer graphics. It's something that uh, those three areas you should know in order to create synthetic data for deep learning. And I believe that this is an important topic also for other reason. I believe this is the future of um, training algorithms for deep learning and uh, like if you have those skills uh, for the future you, you can guarantee yourself a good uh, job i think it's very uh, very um, uh, useful for the future so about myself uh, like uh, i was introduced uh, i am a kaggle grandmaster i started doing kaggle like you see uh, nine years ago uh, I first uh, completed a course of, uh, about machine learning from uh, what was about to become uh, Coursera. It was, wasn't Coursera at the time, uh, but I liked uh, machine learning. I uh, started immediately to test uh, the ideas that I got from the course uh, in like on Kaggle. I started doing very well on Kaggle, so uh, I transitioned myself from being a bank analyst uh, to um, like data data scientist, I believe that this was a good um, decision for me. So, uh, in 2018, um, about some um, experience doing data science in several companies, I co-founded Logic AI, and as one of the first things that we started to, to do is organize Kaggle Days. First, it was more like conferences all around the world. It started all in Warsaw, uh, sorry, uh, but then. Um, we've also uh, came to a conclusion that uh, huge conferences are not uh, ideal because um, people must travel, which is right now almost impossible. And uh, I think uh, people need to have smaller events like meetups. Uh, so we, we decided to al also help the community to organize those meetups. Of course, uh, it would, wouldn't be possible with the, without the community itself. We, we just only um, created the name. And, but the rest uh, is uh, done hugely thanks to uh, the organizers in uh, particular cities. Uh, one of the highlights from last year, I mean two years ago even, uh, it was 2019 uh, first place in uh, Rexus. Rexus is um, uh, the biggest uh, competition for recommendation systems in the world. It's, it's a yearly event, which uh, we, we, our team we won. And uh, 2020 uh, we survived. <laughs> Uh, both as a sorry, both as a company and um, as as a person, uh, we, we we stayed healthy throughout this uh, this uh, period. I, I hope uh, you will stay healthy too, uh, uh, like me. So, uh, why um, training data is the very important right now? Uh, uh, I, Pavel. Yes. I'm sorry for interrupting, but I see that your slides are not on full view, so. Um, uh, I mean, it's from the StreamYard part. So uh, I, w I was trying and changing the settings from my end. If you could go to the tab where it uh, shows the full view. Yes. Uh, is it, uh, sorry, can you, okay. Is it right now? Is it okay? Uh, okay, no, no, it's not. It still shows in two views. 
just a second i maybe i'll uh, okay mm. okay how, 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 is it now okay no okay um yeah you you can just go ahead with that yeah okay uh okay so, so um okay so i go ahead um i don't know if you know uh, this person uh, his name is and and uh, andre karpati He's the chief mm -hmm. uh, machine learning uh, like director in, uh, at, on, in Tesla right now. Uh, he started uh, OpenAI before, so he's he's quite famous in the community. He's very he has very good uh, didactic materials, and one of the things he's famous for is uh, like coining this term software to zero. Uh, he believes um, during the presentation, during some keynote from Tesla, he believes that uh, software one zero is writing code uh, as we are accustomed to do. But software 2.0 is more like managing data sets, uh, like how they are structured, what uh, they consist of, uh, what quality uh, of the data sets you have. It's the very, uh, the, it's the most important thing nowadays for uh, deep learning, the quality of training data sets, because we have algorithms for almost everything right now uh, because of huge uh, advancement in hu deep learning algorithms. So the algorithms are not a problem right now either for segmentation of images classification it's it's really very simple and easy to use right now uh, so that's why uh, he uh, believes that I, I and i also believe that uh, the future is managing the data sets we won't write code we we will manage the data sets so th this is again uh, a reason that uh, data set and synthetic data creation can be important one of the examples from cargill why uh, I believe that uh, if it is important um, is that when like you may remember this competition uh, deep fake detection challenge uh, there was some controversy at the end of the competition because one of the teams which uh, supposedly won the competition I'm talking about this team called uh, all faces are real uh, like um, guided by Gilberto Di Terich, which, which is the, one of the best data scientists on Kaggle right now um, there was some controversy because they used some additional data sets which uh, the organizers thought that they shouldn't use. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the controversy about this issue, but I'm going to talk about the things that um, the choice of the data sets that they were using was, was the difference between the first and seventh place for them. Only by adding or removing this particular data sets that were that was in question, uh, they lost like six positions in the competition. So you can see th uh, without changing even the algorithms themselves, just by changing the choice of the data set. So this is an example from Cargo, uh, why the data sets matter. Y y we all know this. Um, also, there is this, um, you, ca you can ask, okay, we have tools for manual annotation, right? Uh, and what is the difference between manual annotation and synthetic data uh, annotation? So manual annotation, I think we are have plenty of tools to do manual annotation. Uh, so this ease of use is excellent right now. With synthetic data generation, the ease of use is limited because you, we don't have so many frameworks to do this. Uh, we rely on a very I mean, s uh, deep knowledge of 3D software uh, to organize synthetic data. So it's the ease of use is not uh, yet there, but it's becoming uh, more and more popular. So there are some even frameworks right now to uh, create uh, this synthetic data. The annotation time uh, when it comes for manual annotation is really uh, is really bad uh, because mm, let me check. I think I have some automatic. <laughs> slight changer I, I i'm sorry about this um okay so like annotation time especially when it comes uh, pixel based annotation so you must uh, classify each pixel is very bad uh, because you it's time consuming every image is almost uh, the same time of annotation and this is the uh, area where synthetic data uh, generation shines really because you can have uh, pixel wise annotation almost for free it's enough for you to create the 3D scene. Um, so you, you, you get annotations for free and also you get the opportunity to change the environment, the lighting conditions, uh, rotate uh, the objects in 3D space. It's something that is not possible to do during uh, manual tools. Um, so 
this is the uh, thing about the robustness al of the algorithm. Like there, there are some libraries to make image annotations, but they are relying on 2D rotations, skewing, adding noise, uh, uh, warping the image. It's not enough. Uh, they don't really understand what's going on in the image, so they cannot uh, change it uh, in a robust way. Okay, so today we'll be talking about Blender, uh, which is the main software which uh, I will be explaining today how to do uh, synthetic data generation with. Um, Blender is an excellent 3D uh, package. It's like it's a package of multiple things. It's not only 3D modeling, it's also uh, compositing, so arranging the uh, images together. It's also a video sequencer, so you can uh, edit uh, vi videos with this. Uh, it's open source. It's the it's the <laughs> I think the most important thing, and it's one of the most in successful. Uh, sorry, it's the most successful open source projects uh, ever. I think mm, because the number of contributors, the number of companies that contribute to this software, the num number of sponsors, and the uh, community, the size of the community. I think it's one of the biggest uh, communities in the world for any open source project. Uh, it's also mu multi-platform. It works uh, flawlessly everywhere: uh, Windows, Linux, uh, Mac, um, iOS. So it's like uh, something that uh, is very well uh, written. Uh, it's heavily maintained and is sponsored by the gaming industry. Ha it has excellent user interface, especially after this Blender version 2.8. So if you want to try uh, Blender, please make sure to use uh, something that is uh, 2.8 at least. Um, it has active community and one of the most important things uh, for data scientists, it allows uh, Python scripting. You can control everything about Blender with uh, Python script, so you can also create uh, synthetic data using Python. So it's it's incredibly uh, important uh, advantage of Blender. Okay, one of the things uh, is Blender hard. This is the first question. Uh, unfortunately, it is quite uh, hard to learn. Uh, it's something that um, bec because it's hard to learn because it has 3D software has a steep learning curve. You have to do some basic. Uh, you can learn it some basic things, uh, but in order to master it, you will need like a few years at least. But uh, for our uh, use, uh, we don't need uh, many years of experience because there are many tutorials uh, on, in on the internet that can help you with some specific problems. And I have like I have said, um, Blender is not only 3D modeling, it's also 3D sculpting, rendering, uh, material creation, uh, animation and video editing. So it's a lot, uh, it's, it's, it's a suite of uh, tools for uh, uh, creation of 3D. Okay, so the limitations as, uh, of existing uh, image uh, augmentation are uh, quite um, visible because like you, we, we can have like this uh, library called Albuminations, which is a wonderful library uh, in itself. And one of the creators is a uh, Kaggle Grandmaster even. So when you look at the examples what this library can do, it has uh, some good uh, transformations for colors, for example. On the left, you can see the original image. It can uh, shift uh, contrast. It can change uh, uh, some brightness, uh, sh shuffle the cha uh, channels, so it, uh, like replace colors with one another. It can also uh, warp the image, uh, distort it, uh, rotate, like uh, we see uh, here. Um, so we you can see shift, scale, and rotate. So all these transformations are really important to augment your data set. But uh, they don't understand uh, really what is on the photo, right? They can only manipulate in, in 2D, uh, but they don't cannot rotate it in 3D space, for example, or they cannot apply um, motion blur. If, if it's an image for coming from a video sequence, you cannot uh, create uh, motion blur automatically, which is very easy to do in 3D software when you're creating animations. Okay, one, one of the one of the things that was uh, used on Cargill as uh, synthetic data generation was used uh, in a, uh, a few years ago in this Carvana image masking competition. I think uh, this company had some original images uh, from maybe uh, from from the past. They needed to remove this background from the image. So uh, 
and only be left with this uh, shape of the car. Uh, so someone uh, very quickly spotted uh, some analogy because in GTA 5, this is uh, one of the biggest and the most famous games in, in, uh, on PlayStations and on PCs. Uh, it's, there is uh, like a bunch of vehicles there that you can uh, buy or steal. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a game about uh, burglars also. Uh, but you can, you can have those cars and uh, the guy that wrote this article, it's available uh, in the source, uh, has taken this uh, car from the garage and put it in, the, uh, pl in place of this uh, scene. Uh, so having this um, ideal 3D model of this car and ideal outline of this car makes it very easy to create um, synthetic data. He almost solved the problem by using uh, this. Uh, I think it's an incredibly powerful method. And this is not the only uh, thing uh, they use GTA for. Um, like GTA 5 is used by researchers not only for masking cars, but also for simulating uh, traffic conditions. Because as you can see, with some uh, effort, uh, you can generate, this is, this is not uh, a real photo, this is a screenshot from the game. It looks incredibly detailed, incredibly and I think it's, it's beautiful, right? Uh, you can see reflections on the water here, um, yeah, shadows, like it's, it's ideal uh, almost photo. So mm, how they are using this, they are simulating the driving conditions. On the right, you can see uh, that they can vary uh, the time of the day. For example, there is a sunset here or night even. They can simulate also sub-scenarios on the road. So like overtaking or if the lines are um, blocked or something like this. There are multiple scenarios which you can simulate in GTA and it's, uh, it's incredible that they are using uh, a game uh, to, to do this. So this is only uh, to show how powerful those techniques are and uh, they are quite popular in the research uh, as well. Okay, so for this um, meetup, uh, I downloaded one scene uh, from the uh, internet. Uh, I will later on uh, show you this uh, source from the, uh, for this image. Uh, this is an ori original image. I liked it because um, maybe it's a, it's like a girl's room, um, but it has many things going on in the picture. You can see uh, the the light comes through the window. You can uh, see the walls. You can see the ceiling. Some toys are scattered on the floor. Uh, but I mean, there is also some depth into the image, so you can see the. Uh, objects that are uh, on the first uh, close to the camera and far from the camera. It's also important for the later uh, things that I will show. So what you can do with this image are multiple things. First, you can uh, simulate uh, just by changing the settings of the light, uh, by uh, cha changing the uh, intensity of the light, you can simulate uh, some very light, uh, very over oversaturated image, right? So something that maybe that would be very easy to do using some filters, but uh, here we are simulating it using real uh, light sources, uh, like physically uh, correct light sources. You can um, create like light for like a sunset light. You can create light uh, that is very low. Um, I think that <laughs> when when people are training this uh, algorithms for uh, vehicles, they're they tell you that most of the uh, footage they have is from the night, so it doesn't look like realistic photo from the full, full bright day, but it's more like uh, night, night uh, uh, videos. Yeah, so you, you can even change all the materials to blue. You can manipulate the materials in the next uh, um, slide. Uh, you can see I replaced mm, the walls uh, of this room to be like uh, similar to some mirror. It's maybe not realistic because um, you, you cannot see it in real life, but I wanted to show uh, that uh, you can really manipulate every, every aspect of this image uh, that you want, uh, like materials, you can add noise to materials, it's, it's not a problem. Uh, one of the, because these are all inputs, right, uh, to the algorithm, um, you can treat them as inputs, so what, what can we get uh, as uh, labels from this image? First, uh, what we can get from this image is the depth. Uh, so what you can see here 
is the image which, which represents how far the objects are uh, from the camera. So you can see, my, except this uh, background, it's, it's black because it's, it represents the sky. You can see the more uh, darker the object is, the closer to the camera it is, right? And the farther, it's lighter. So uh, this kind of uh, data set, this um, depth data set can be used for many different things. Uh, I, I know for sure that they are using this kind of uh, images uh, for um, traffic simulation also because from the from the photo or from the uh, video you must understand how close uh, the object is to the car for example and in order to understand this you must create first the data set with which has a depth um, like as a label um, right this, this so this is one uh, one use case for uh, training mm, as an output, you can uh, see the depth of the, uh, the image. The next one, uh, what you can get is uh, true colors of uh, the materials. It's maybe not so useful, but it's interesting that um, this, these colors are not affected by light. So you can see almost the uniform color for the wall here uh, represents that you, you, can, you have like a true color for this wall and not affected by the light or shadow for that matter so this is uh, this can be also useful if you want to to do some things with deep learning mm, but the most i think useful thing is uh, instance object uh, segmentation um, it's something that i think uh, deep learning really is good at it's segmenting the objects uh, pixel wise so using this uh, here i assigned a random uh, color to each object Actually, those uh, those bricks are represented as a single object, so they are a single color. Probably, maybe they should be separate uh, here. But uh, other than that, you can see that uh, the, these objects are ideally seg segmented. So this is very important for uh, creating synthetic. Um yeah, for synthetic data. Um, and. Before I show you the next thing, um, I will tell you more about some uh, algebra. And this is uh, about normal vectors. Normal vectors are an object that is uh, like a line that is perpendicular to the mm, surface of some object. So in 3D graphics, uh, they are represented uh, by colors. So the, the degree in which the line goes from the plane, uh, for example, here, we can specify that uh, planes that are up uh, are green, the left are black, and the right are blue, uh, sorry, red. So uh, knowing this, we can generate also uh, normals uh, from Blender. I know that normals are also used, uh, used for uh, traffic simulations because if you know that an object is facing towards the camera, it can be a car that is incoming, for example, and you must understand the uh, its direction and its uh, location in space. And it also can be used for creation, creation of uh, those bounding boxes around objects, because this is another uh, topic that is worth mentioning that in Blender you can automatically create for any object uh, a box around this. And it's not a box like a two-dimensional two box, it's a box that is three-dimensional in space. So we can understand how the object is located in the, in the scene. Okay, uh, so the ideas for projects uh, using this technology, uh, there are like infinite possibilities uh, to, to use this um, software. One of the things that I think, one of the cool things that you can do, uh, Blender can create uh, for any scene, it can create uh, stereoscopic images uh, from any render. So st stereoscopic means uh, that uh, it can create uh, it can simulate a left and right eye. Uh, so uh, render the image using two uh, cameras that are shifted uh, like in space. Uh, and using this, you can create from one image, you can create two images. And when you see them, uh, if one e sees uh, each image separately, it uh, looks like a 3D image. And this is extremely fun, funny because uh, imagine that for any video, uh, that you have, like any video that wasn't filmed using uh, two cameras, 
you can create uh, a second image uh, represented like re right eye and uh, combine it uh, together to create a stereoscopic video. It's something that uh, you can do uh, quite easy in Blender. Maybe uh, the only problem here is that you need some uh, large number of scenes uh, in Blender to, to do this. So this is one, one idea uh, for the project. Uh, second idea I think is very, uh, very interesting um, is frame interpolation. Uh, so it's not a new idea also, but it's something that uh, can be Blender can be used uh, for. It's uh, an idea that uh, using a video that has like 24 frames per second, you can easily interpolate the frames using deep learning and you can create uh, like arbitrary slow motion uh, video. So the problem here is to uh, create this middle image from those uh, images that are around it. Uh, so using Blender, you can create animations uh, and these animations can be have any number of frames per second. So you can create training data for your algorithms without uh, any problem uh, if it's about uh, video interpolation. So this is another cool idea, I think, for some projects uh, and I'm just uh, telling you those ideas because I think uh, uh, showing your skills uh, one with those ideas can be really uh, original uh, and uh, can be useful for looking for a job or something like this. It's really impressive uh, what you can do right now with those algorithms. Uh, another thing you can do uh, in Blender and you can do it quite easily. Here you can see uh, some objects uh, and specifically these are glasses. Uh, this or this uh, comes from the company called Immersive Unit. Uh, they have s a couple of videos about uh, generating synthetic data using Blender, uh, so you can uh, look them up. Uh, and th what you can see here are uh, 3D rendered glasses, and uh, these are not real glasses lying on the uh, carpet. Uh, and it's very <laughs> impressive because they look like uh, real glasses. Uh, maybe it's for you can train the algorithm if someone is looking for the glasses on the floor and he cannot see them. Uh, there, there is this uh, poem in po Polish uh, language uh, that uh, some guy lost his uh, glasses and at the end uh, he mm, uh, saw that the glasses are on his nose. <laughs> it, it was it is very funny, but um, here you can see that you can uh, have an image uh, of the carpet and uh, put uh, any 3D objects um, uh, using Blender and uh, you can put it in a way that merges uh, with the background, uh, the lighting uh, is, uh, is ideal. Um, yeah, so you can, you can use uh, many images like this uh, to train your algorithms to, uh, to be able to spot wh where the glasses are, for example. Um, the and what you can do uh, on photos, you can also do on uh, videos. Uh, Blender has cap capability uh, to uh, track uh, camera movements. If you have uh, some footage uh, of, s of a street or your room uh, that is moving, you can easily uh, track uh, the movement of the camera using Blender and then put uh, some objects in this 3D scene. Um, so I can show you how it looks like. So here, here you see original footage and at the end, someone has added, someone has added this uh, object, um, this text camera tracking. Uh, but you can add any object. You can add a car here, for example, I and uh, you would get ideal segmentation of the car using this technique, uh, also for videos. So this is uh, w what works for uh, photos, works for videos as well, and it's really really powerful uh, in this context. There are many also plugins uh, for camera tracking in Blender and I think off the shelf Blender can do it as well. Okay, so mm, one of the things that is uh, really uh, useful to, to know uh, is that uh, there are plenty of uh, resources that you can download models from. Uh, there is this website called Free, Free 3D uh, with, with, with like hundreds of thousands of models which you can mm, either download for free because there are some free resources or if you are looking for some professional 
uh, uh, 3D models, uh, some industrial 3D, 3D models, then some of them are uh, not free. Uh, but it depends on, on your use case. Maybe you'll uh, save a lot of time uh, buying one of those. Uh, there is uh, also this uh, website called BlendSwap. And by the way, these are, these are just three uh, examples. There are mo more uh, examples of websites that can share 3D models. Um, there are also plenty of YouTube tutorials how to create some uh, 3D models. Uh, there is another website called a specific, it's specific for Blender. Uh, people share on this website very good quality. Uh, actually, this uh, girl's room that I've shown before uh, comes from this blend uh, swap uh, website. It has um, very good quality models. Uh, so something that I see comes from the industry, from architects, which are visualizing the interiors for their clients uh, because the quality is, is really amazing. Also worth mentioning, uh, uh, is that you can use uh, all the resources that come from 3D printing uh, communities. So this is something that is, I think, uh, the most dynamically uh, uh, like increasing community also because uh, there, there are like hundreds or millions of models that you can print right now and it's becoming more and more popular. People, uh, the printers are getting cheaper uh, day by day. So uh, people are investing also time to create those 3D models uh, for 3D printers. One of the things uh, that is downside of the um, models that uh, are for 3D printers is that they don't have any materials, right? Because when you print uh, using a 3D model, you, you print uh, in a single color. So this, this, the use uh, of this, um, uh, these models is limited to some very simple shapes, but it still uh, can be a useful resource if, if you're looking for one. Okay, so this is um, this is uh, all uh, that I have for now. Uh, the, the summary is that um, we know all that deep learning algorithms need a lot, a lot of high quality annotations, uh, and with synthetic data generation, you control uh, ideally, you, you create the perfect uh, conditions for creating such uh, synthetic data, and sometimes it's not very easy to do, but if it's uh, if you are able to do it, uh, you get uh, synthetic data, labeled data, ideally, uh, that can be very useful for you. Also, I didn't mention that uh, maybe uh, this uh, synthetic data, you don't have to treat as the final uh, data set. You can treat it as a data set for uh, on which you pre-train your models. And because it's very popular right now to uh, use pre-training uh, in deep learning, I mean, most of the, uh, people that are training algorithms are using uh, pre-trained algorithms from Google or from uh, NVIDIA or whatever. So uh, so pre-training is, uh, is a way the definitely the, the way to go in deep learning. So maybe if not uh, ideal, y if you cannot I create ideal uh, data set, maybe you can create less than ideal <laughs> data set uh, automatically and treat it as a uh, data set for pre-training, which can be also very useful. One of the advantages is uh, that uh, those models can create uh, like robust annotations and this is this is the most uh, important advantage and uh, as I mentioned before, in order to for you to uh, utilize uh, synthetic data generation you have you have to cover three areas uh, and it's I think uh, in the future, um, things like general knowledge about many different things will be very useful because the, uh, the uh, environment is changing a lot, uh, people are inventing a lot of things. So whatever you know right now can be obsolete in one year or two years, you never know. So I think it's very good to focus uh, your attention on several different things. And in the case of synthetic data generation, if you know three things, deep learning, deep lear uh, Python programming and uh, you have some basic uh, 3D software knowledge, you can already create synthetic data uh, for, uh, for the future. So this is very important uh, skill to have. Uh, and if you want to learn more uh, on Blender, uh, there are some YouTube tutorials. I mean, this is the very vibrant community. There are uh, hundreds of thousands of tutorials on YouTube. Um, there is also some course uh, that I found um, for synthetic gener data generation uh, uh, coming from this uh, company called Immersive Limit. Uh, they specifically focus on 3D rendered data set creation in Blender. 
uh, you can uh, watch some preview of this uh, here you can read research papers that touch this su subject especially about the gta 5 but uh, not only about this and uh, the last thing i encourage you to try your own ideas i think uh, there are no limits uh, what you with what you can do using uh, blender and synthetic data generation so i encourage you to uh, not to uh, like repeat the same um, use cases uh, like face detection or something like this just create something new that uh, no one has seen before and you'll get you'll be noticed uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure about this so uh, now the time for questions Uh, so Pavel, uh, there were a few questions in the chat and I would like to put them up for you. So uh, the first question was, can uh, uh, can we use this technique for text as well? Like uh, maybe not using Blender, but um, any other link or text uh, such technique may, you may know about? Uh, not using Blender. Like uh, if similar to, uh, text generation, synthetic text ah, generation, text generation. Technique should be there. Mm. Sorry, I, I'm not sure uh, about this. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, it, it's I'm I, I'm not uh, I don't want to mess up <laughs> the answer. I don't know <laughs> about uh, about text generation. It's like um, uh, I think in uh, in a lot of ways it's uh, much harder than images. Okay, and there was one doubt that how image augmentation can help to improve the performance of the model. Yeah, this is something that is not guaranteed, right? Uh, but uh, the idea is that if you can create uh, an image or video that is ideally, that looks photorealistic and is ideally uh, segmented or labeled, uh, you have bounding boxes or whatever uh, you want to get from the deep learning algorithm. So, I mean, the question is why shouldn't it help, <laughs> uh, right? Uh, it's like I can reverse the question. So if you if you see if you see like uh, if you see an an image like this, and you can see uh, that it has ideally you, you can get ideal pixel wise segmentation for the car or for multiple cars on one scene. So why shouldn't it work for uh, for improving the alg uh, performance of the algorithm? This is this is my qu so so the so I would ask the question by reversing the question. If you if you look at those examples uh, and just uh, judge the, judge the quality of, of the three D renders, uh, so if you can imitate reality with three D renders, the, you can also improve the performance of the algorithms. I'm I'm pretty sure uh, this is the case. Okay, so I hope that answers the question. And uh, the next one that we have is, um, could you please elaborate a bit more on frame interpolation example? This question was by Alex. Yes, yes. Um, so there, there are multiple uh, ways to interpolate frames. You can, there are some even ways not, not using deep learning, but uh, uh, imagine that you have some uh, animation, right? Uh, which you created in Blender or any 3D software. In this animation, uh, the camera movements are uh, as smooth as possible. So you can s choose the number of frames per second you want to get uh, from this animation. So by default, this, all the movies are recorded in like 24 frames per second. On YouTube, you have sometimes videos in 60 frames per second. So. And in Blender, you can create uh, videos uh, with any frames per second if you have the original animation. So if you can create uh, an animation mm, in using 60 frames per second, you can treat uh, each image, ev every second image as training uh, your training data. Uh, so you, you have the two frames around. Uh, and using those two frames, you want to interpolate them, them to the frame which should be in the middle, which is not uh, obvious uh, how to do, uh, but uh, using deep learning, I mean, deep learning uh, cares only about the data set, 
right? So if you can provide a very good data set for this, uh, the results will be quite quite good. I've seen very good examples on YouTube uh, that uh, you really wouldn't be able to spot the difference between um, the um, interpolated frame and the original. So, so, so this is this is about frame, frame interpolation. It's it's a, a very interesting topic, uh, I think, also. So, but then there are plenty of materials about this uh, if you if you can look it up. I think that this would be the next talk topic, also. <laughs> okay, so we have one more question that um, is Blender based on GANs. This is by Sanchita. No, 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 it's not. Uh, it's something that you, um, as far as I understand the question, uh, there is no relation. Blender is a soft, it's a 3D software uh, that is that primarily used is not uh, for deep learning. Just by accident, it can create uh, useful things for deep learning community, uh, but it doesn't know anything ab about deep learning. But there are some things in Blender that are using deep learning. For example, uh, deep learning use, uses uh, denoising uh, of images, which is based on deep learning algorithms. And also, <laughs> this is funny because uh, denoising algorithms are trained using synthetic data also. So, so there is some relation to deep learning in Blender itself, but it's not uh, related to GANs, I think, because GANs, uh, GANs are so something that... Uh, that is um, quite quite different uh, from from more what I've been talking about. Because uh, guns, the different yeah, the diff the difference between guns and the blender is that guns uh, really don't create anything new. Uh, if you think about this, if you have uh, if you if you can, can create uh, random images, you're you, you are always relying on some original image. And you can see it uh, in guns which are trained on uh, celebrities, uh, right? <laughs> These uh, guns are not creating new faces. They are creating some smooth interpolation between faces, which looks uh, like every face um, between two faces looks realistic. So this is the uh, how I understand guns. And with Blender, you can create something that is really new. Uh, that that uh, that uh, you couldn't see before, like if uh, because gun uh, cannot uh, I from if you have so for example images for uh, of faces uh, and using only front facing camera you cannot create uh, rotated face right you cannot rotate left and right uh, the face but in Blender you can you can so if you have a model of some face you can create infinite number of rotations uh, of many faces and you can create an algorithm that can uh, learn to rotate face the faces so so the, the di differ difference in my opinion is that the blender is uh, you can create something new in blender in, in gun uh, you don't have to yeah so i hope that answers the question and yeah so with this i hope that we come to the end of our today's session and thanks a lot Pavel, for your wonderful slide and uh, it was a new topic too so uh, uh, i guess we question. have another question yeah for a novice and <laughs> yeah i see i see the question uh, so for for novice in kaggle competitions what are the key points uh, one should uh, take note while working on problems to get good results I think the only thing uh, that uh, separates good results from like worse results is the time that you spent on them. So uh, I, when I was working on competitions, I, I, it was, uh, I, I wasn't thinking about anything else, <laughs> right? Um, so, so you really need to spend time on on them, and uh, I think you need to remember that uh, the guys who are winning the competitions are not. Uh, geniuses, <laughs> uh, if I can say so, because I'm not a genius and I, I won like uh, several competitions. Uh, it's only I, I I guaranteed it's only the matter of uh, dedication and time you spent. And uh, also remember that every competition has some tricks uh, which you must find. And the only thing that uh, separates you and uh, the winner is the number of tricks. 
uh, he found. Uh, so, but in order to find those tricks, you need to spend time on the competition. So, uh, and you can, for example, check out uh, the competition uh, uh, from Mercury uh, Price uh, Price Prediction Challenge. At the, uh, we we won this competition together with Con Constantin, and at the end, Constantin has written a uh, 80 line of code that would win the competition. Uh, so you can imagine this was very condensed uh, code with a lot of tricks uh, inside, uh, but it's not a complicated. It wasn't a complicated solution. It has it had only some tricks uh, inside. So uh, so f so again, I would summarize uh, when you are starting, uh, please uh, focus. I I think for me, I don't know if for you it w will work, but for me, uh, what worked was focusing on one competition at a time. I couldn't uh, compete and good, get good results in multiple competitions. Uh, if that uh, is answer, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I I hope that that does answer the question. Yeah. So, I see there are no more questions coming up. If there are any questions, folk, now is the time you can put up. So I hope that you found found this topic interesting, um, because it is, in my opinion. And yes, it was new. <laughs> it was new for the community, and I do hope that they got to learn a lot from the today's session. Yes. So thank you, thank you very much for the invitation, and uh, have a have a good rest of the day, and stay healthy and safe. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye bye.